Hello, boils and ghouls. Today I have another process painting I will narrate for you today. This time we will be working on this fish farm that I had painted in March 20th, 2020, or at least that's the completion date. The video footage you see is archived from a Twitch stream um, created around the same time, twitch.tv slash nadraws. I try to stream once or twice a week, about 50% games and 50% artwork if you are interested. A bit of history behind this painting is it was actually started on location in 2020. So what you see right now is as far as I had gotten before I flew back home or to my new home 800 miles 800 miles away from where I had grown up. 2019 I moved away from home for the first time to a place with mountains but not a single ocean in sight. But the mountains are beautiful. I look in any direction where I live now and I can see them. It's beautiful. And I have grown quite to like it here since it's been a couple of years since I've been living here and I've adjusted fairly well now. But uh, 2019 was pretty rough. Getting my footing here in this new place far away from home was pretty difficult for a number of reasons. Um, being far away from friends, family, familiar places, and not actually making enough to make rent every month was quite a lot of pressure and stress. I was working full-time or overtime for a number of months. And by the time December and November had rolled around in 2019, I decided, well, I want to go back home. I want to plan a trip. I'll fly out. I'll go see my friends and family where I used to live. And I'll just get, you know, a week away from work and be refreshed enough that I can jump back into it and, you know, hopefully feel better. But as luck would have it, um, around February things got a bit dire. Um, the Pacific Northwest was kind of the hub of the beginning of the pandemic. And although things were still emerging by the time I flew out, um, knowing what I do know about coronavirus now and the COVID-19 pandemic, I don't think I would have made the decision I did to continue through with my trip. And I'm very thankful for my friend and her family for allowing me to stay with her, even given the circumstances. Um, but that being said, uh, there are many reasons I am very very thankful for making this trip, despite it winding up being as weird as it was. Seeing friends and family I hadn't seen in a couple of years, or even just nine months or so, was a huge relief to see that they are still alive, even though I've been texting them and messaging, messaging them and seeing them in person was a big relief. Seeing the ocean again blue skies, the gray skies, the rain, the wind, the pine trees, the same restaurants in downtown areas, and visiting Seattle itself proper as well to see fun familiar places like Pike's Market was a great joy. It was very weird when I was in Seattle during this time. Middle of the day, it was empty. Hardly any car traffic, almost no foot traffic. I could count the number of people I saw for two blocks on both my hands, and that was it. But I still had a good time seeing the familiar sights and sounds. And while I was there, uh, visiting my hometown as well as Seattle, I tried to take as much time as I could to bring my sketchbook with me and paint or draw or sketch or something in person on plein air. Um, something that I definitely miss doing for sure here, but it was refreshing to just be outdoors drawing the things that I was curious about or familiar with. Um, what you're seeing here is in my hometown on the water of 
very strange fish farm. <laughs> it's been around pretty much as long as I can remember, and I feel like it's gonna stay around forever. It's had a lot of rumors around it being polluting, dangerous, changing owner hands quite often, and quote unquote shutting down soon, but you know, I lived in that town for about 15, 16, maybe even 17 years, and it's still there. Even after being away from home for a year, it was still there, up and running. It's kind of a fond place for me. It's not the prettiest building. It's pretty worn, weathered. All the paint is stripping. It's not as bright a color as I'm sure it was decades and decades ago, but... The fact that it's always been there, kind of a rock in this unstable world in some ways, is comforting. My grandparents used to live in the neighborhood this, this fish farm is, actually, so every single holiday that we would make a drive down to their house, we would see it. Sometimes it would be empty, sometimes the workers would be, you know, small ants on the dock moving and pushing and working, doing whatever it is they do. But since this is also in the neighborhood of uh, where a friend of mine is, they let, she let me borrow some of her paints actually, and I started the process on this. I took a photo um, before I left so I could finish it at home, which is the footage you're seeing now. It was a lot of fun to paint this. Um, lots of interesting textures, figuring out how to do the old wood on the dock, and the paint and shadows on the blue of the building itself, as well as trying to balance how to best go about doing the waves, all while painting on not watercolor paper. <laughs> this is very light paper that I was using just in a sketchbook. I really didn't think I would take it to this much of a finish, but sometimes I can be quite determined. And I feel like more often than not, I have more practice taking things to a finish on paper that is not meant to be <laughs> final paper. But it's good practice either way. It was a good chance to paint a building, something more rigid than I usually draw. Typically people or landscapes on occasion, but all the little fine details were a lot of fun to pick and choose from and work from. And this wound up being a very nice casual stream as well. I think I only had a couple people who wound up um, chatting away with me and just discussing random things, not even the painting, but it was peaceful and it was kind of nice to draw something that meant even just a little bit of a something to me. Typically my artwork is just about I don't know, kind of vague things, not specific places I've been to, not specific people per se, at least these days, even if I started doing a lot of fan art and, you know, sometimes do that, but having something more specific and tangible that I know of and have seen and get to share with the world through my painting is not a feeling I'm terribly familiar with, but I do enjoy it, actually. I don't always know how to be a personable artist the way some of my favorites are. I don't always know how to tell a personal story, but starting to with this painting was good, I think. It's definitely a piece that's going to stick around in my portfolio for a while just because I I do am I do feel very satisfied with the way it looks and the way it shows the fading of the trees in the distance, the waves of the ocean, the harshness and stripness of the wood. And I mean, I think it looks like what I painted, <laughs> which is also a good thing. But that's the story behind this fish farm. It's just kind of a staple in my life and I was able to revisit it at a time when it felt like the whole world was changing constantly and in ways nobody could control or conceive of or manage. Having those things stay steady in your life, 
like for me, artwork has been very important through times of difficulty and distress. Just having something that is at least familiar when you feel so out of place in your own life or in your situation or whatever it may be is a huge relief. Having hobbies like this are deeply important, even if it's something you never share with anybody. And although I've been sharing my work online for a solid six, seven years by now, I highly encourage um, you all to have something that's just personal for yourself. <laughs> And since I'd done uh, so much painting on the rest of this page, I used a little bit of a um, whiteout brush, I suppose, to highlight the edges so I can kind of crisp it up later in Photoshop, as you can see here. Again, it's kind of grainy and strange because the water and the paint would bleed out a little bit more than it typically would if I were using real watercolor paper, but I'm happy with the results. And I hope this story was interesting to you and I appreciate you for sticking around to watch. <laughs>